Hey all, welcome to the March Mid-Month Math Medley. Mmm, to the power of five. The show where I bring to you maths news that's been going on in this past month and other maths things that I've been thinking about. I'm too disorganised to put it out at the start of the month, so I put it out somewhere near the middle, or sometimes near two-thirds of the way through. So, what's been happening in maths this past month? The SMC conference, the Scottish Mathematical Council, was in Stirling and it was an awesome day. It was really fun. Heather the Weather Reed, who you might remember if you were around in the 90s, did the keynote and she spoke quite strongly about what makes math difficult, why some people dislike maths, and how important numeracy and scientific literacy is for tackling and even just understanding some of the world's biggest issues. And she spoke a lot about climate change and its impact and how we need maths to understand climate change. Obviously herself being a weather person, a meteorologist, that is the proper word for weather person. She thinks about the climate a lot and showed how there's quite a lot of numeracy needed to understand the climate and climate change. And we will speak later on about maths in big issues. I also got to hang around backstage with Chris Smith, the maths legend. Maths news that basically became real news this month. Matt Parker released a book and everyone loves it. I got it a few days ago and I'm already on page 33. It's really funny and interesting. I've got chocolate on the front of mine already. It's easy to read and I reckon if you had about third or fourth year high school level maths that there's nothing in here that you wouldn't understand. It's accessible and super cool and you can't help but read it in an Australian accent. Matt Parker is also going to be at the Edinburgh Fringe this year so cannot wait for that. And yes, no March Maths News Channel would be complete without talking about Pi Day. Now obviously I am putting this video out a little bit too late for Pi Day, but that's fine because Pi Day is just a useful marker to let you know there's only Pi months left until the real event, Tau Day. So in honour of Tau's little sister, I thought I'd bring you Pi facts about Pi. Pi fact one. How much Pi do we know? Well, I'm glad you asked. We know a uh, Pi trillion digits of Pi, a new world record just this past Pi Day. How's that for maths news? So 3.14 trillion digits of Pi, um, smashing the previous world record was discovered and checked by a team at Google who was led by Emma Haruka Iwao as a celebration of Pi Day or a publicity stunt for Google, depending on how cynical you are of the world. Either way, it's a really fantastic technological advancement in terms of computer science. Pi fact numero two. How do we find the pi? So obviously, if you ever went to high school, you will know that pi is the circumference of a circle divided by its diameter, and you probably did a wee exercise where you measured the circumference of a circle, and you measured the diameter, divided them, and got an approximation of pi, but it was probably like quite a terrible approximation of pi. It's a very nice formula, but it's not a very accurate formula for calculating pi. And as you can imagine in the modern day, we just use like tons of computing power. Like I can't stress how much computing power this takes to find trillions of digits of pi. You can do a few digits of pi yourself, and you should. So think of like a team of computers all working together for months and months and months just on crunching the numbers um, on a few formulas. That's how pi is found. So more specifically, um, the team at Google and most people use something called Y Cruncher or Gamma Cruncher, which is a program which you could just download for free. Like you could have it, you should just give it a go. Get involved in that maths. And this most recent batch of pi digits uh, was the first time that people have used cloud storage to calculate pi. So Y Cruncher uses two formulas which are a little bit different from pi is equal to C over D. The first one is the Chudnovsky formula for pi. Ding which I am not going to read out. And then it checks that against the Ramanujan formula for pi. Da 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 da! Which I quite like because it has this little root two in here. Pi fact number three. NASA only uses 15 decimal places of pi for all their calculations. You might think that's insane because they're doing literal rocket science, but actually with 40 decimal places of pi, you could calculate the circumference of the observable universe with only an error of less than the diameter of an atom. Kind of an outrageous claim, so I'll put a link down there to a post on the subreddit They Did The Math, which is really a fun subreddit to hang out with, uh, where someone explains very eloquently in a few lines that, yep, definitely true, 40 decimal places of pi, 
It's all you need for the whole universe. I also very much enjoy the R they did the math sister subreddits. R they did the monster math and R it was a graveyard graph. Point one four of a fact about pi. If you convert pi into binary, which I like to call pinary, the one thousand billionth digit of pinary is um, du -du 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 -du, upcoming maths in April. There's kind of a dearth of maths news for April, so in the UK the clocks change next week, which is always kind of fun. Time zones are a bit weird and uh, for a little bit of extra tomfoolery I'm also flying to somewhere with a different time zone on that day. I mean time is a bit made up so the maths of it's quite cool I guess. And of course upcoming things, the final one I'm going to talk about Brexit. So Brexit itself is obviously not a maths issue but I have seen a lot of issues with the maths used in Brexit. Now obviously this is my channel and the opinions are my own and it would not take a genius to work out which side of the fence I am on, but I'll just lay my bias out here right now. Uh, I voted to remain in the EU and I still strongly believe that we should be in the EU. I think that if you are a UK resident that you should sign the petition to revoke Article 50 because if life gave you lemons and said, yo, you don't actually need to take these lemons by the way, you can just revoke them and give them back, then you wouldn't keep a hold of the lemons, would you? Obviously I'd be willing to change my mind on Brexit, but the free movement of labour and not having ridiculous tariffs on everything. I see those as very strong arguments for staying in the EU. That being said, and personal politics aside, it's been very difficult throughout the entire Brexit process to get actual facts and understand the figures and statistics that are just being thrown around, because some of them are just straight up lies on both sides. Statistics is kind of a weird section of maths which I shied away from for a long time. I didn't think there was anything interesting in there. I was wrong. There are some very cool things about statistics, but Statistics are definitely not intuitive to human beings. Even in Matt Parker's new book, Humble Pie, he talks about how there's certain kinds of maths that humans just innately kind of come pre-programmed with. Most young children think logarithmically. Sounds very fancy, but it means you think in terms of multiplication instead of addition. Statistics, on the other hand, nearly never works out to how you first think it will. And in order to decipher what's actually going on and understand all of the statistics and everything that's in the media, be numerate and scientifically literate on big issues and just understand what is happening, which is super important if you're going to participate in a democracy. You have to sharpen those skills. So I'm going to recommend two books. Uh, the first one here, Daniel Kahneman, Thinking Fast and Slow, is kind of a classic book. Um, Daniel Kahneman is an economist and this is pretty well critically acclaimed. Look there, winner of a Nobel Prize. And this just kind of goes through common thinking fallacies um, and the problems you have when you think fast instead of taking your time and thinking slowly. Another really good book to battle your way through the barrage of ridiculous averages and made up numbers from another Daniel Levitin, which is a field guide to lies and statistics, which is exactly how it sounds. It's quite a funny book too. And if books aren't your thing or you just don't have the time, a really good podcast I would recommend is More or Less Truth Behind the Stats, which interestingly enough is produced by the BBC but has no qualms when it comes to calling out BBC's dubious numbers in mass headlines. They haven't spoken about Brexit in about a month on that podcast, but they do have really interesting topics every week. They kind of model really well how you should approach reading a statistic in a newspaper and then fact checking or maybe if, even if you're not heavily fact checking stuff just kind of running through the process in your head to work out if this is a reliable statistic or not. So in short, be aloof and be open-minded and really think about any numbers that you rely on when you're making big political decisions. Have opinions, let people know your opinions, but be polite and be civil. Unlike in pure maths, unfortunately, when it comes to politics, there's no big truth or proof that we can find that's out there somewhere. It's all beautiful and pure. You're always just trying to find the closest approximation that you can. Who knows what will be happening in a month? Calculate your probabilities now. I'm not sure if the universe is actually really small or if pi is just really long.